So in this video, we're gonna go over some lead lists and how you can make them even better and higher quality every single time. So I'm gonna show you what I'm currently doing for my company, but some things that you can think about on how to really get inside the mind of your buyer. And look, do not force this. Don't do this in a vacuum and start with like a big wide net, if you will. Um, and then optimize for having conversations with people and then lean into the people you can help and where you're seeing that you're adding value, right? You're not just gonna like guess the right person in a vacuum. The, the market will tell you it's our job to listen. So given that, let's actually walk through what are some of the filters that are already on here. Um, notice which ones are on, which ones are off, and I'm just gonna talk through it. So the people that I'm working with are starting a business and it is extremely unlikely that they're starting a business and they're bootstrapped and they have like more than 10 employees, right? Like that's basically like a zero chance. So that's why my two company headcounts are one to 10 and self-employed. I would probably do like one to three and self-employed if it let me do that. Past company I have used before. I've done crazy lists like coming in here and being like Deloitte. Uh, oh, I don't know how to spell Deloitte. There we go. Uh, including Deloitte, including, you know, the big, you know, Bain or including, you know, big consulting companies. And I'm not just going to keep adding to them, but just to show you that obviously this is a very small list right now, but you can see how you can target people going from like going through their journey. And in my world, that makes sense. That might not make sense in your world where they used to work. So since I'm looking for someone at a moment in time, which is when they're deciding to move from a high paid job to you know, starting their own business. If they now have founder title, but they used to work at Deloitte, they probably have a killer skill set, right? And they're gonna be my ICP, stands for Ideal Client Profile. So moving on, uh, company type, you technically could come in here and put like, you know, private, public, and like basically everything that's not like, you know, like nonprofits and all of that. I just don't think that these are always super accurate and that's kind of why I stay away. Um, but you can give that a try and see if you like the quality of the list, right? You Like if I was looking for self-employed, I could just come in here and go like that, self-employed, maybe cell phone, and let's see how that does with the, with the list. See, that brought it down to 380. And then if I take these out, I have a thousand. So that just doesn't feel good for me and that's why I've strayed from using it. Now, in, in the function, that's like saying department. And this field I find is really only relevant when you're up market in terms of like, uh, like a human resources department, finances department, engineering department. So if you're looking for a function inside of a company, uh, like a whole team, I would lean into that. But if you're looking for like founder CEO types, like in smaller, your down market, I would stay away from that because they don't really use that role. Um, and that could be more noise than anything. And now in the role, the most key word here is the word current. Now, just something that's misleading, let's see if we could find one real fast, is that it's current, but you can have multiple current titles, right? Like you'll notice, oh, I guess I do have managing director. So anyway, the point being like, you might see like customer success representative and you're like, that's not at all in here. And it's just because they're that and they're one of these job titles. So it's not saying only job title, it says current. So it's any of the current ones. Um, seniority level is kind of like what title they've held at any point in time. Um, I stay away from this because I once used that field and then I found somebody who like was like CEO, president and chairman and CEO of like a, a paper route or something like very like, you know, entry level. I'm not trying to rag on anybody with a paper route. It's totally viable businesses. I love boring business, businesses. But the point is like I was looking for like CEO exec types and I that he wasn't an exec. Um, so that's why I stay away from seniority level. Now check out what I'm doing here on the left side. And it's funny, I did this one custom, but then I wanna show you how ChatGPT can help you. So I'm gonna show you the actual prompt I gave it. So um, just so you know, I gave it what I call our easy offer uh, in a box document. And then with that, I'm like, given this, what are the most likely former titles uh, to search for on Sales Navigator for the kinds of people who are my ideal client profile? And then it kind of like knew. If you have these titles here, you're a great chance of being uh, one of my ICPs. And the funny thing is, like you have Director of Operations, that one hit, VP of Marketing, I think I have in here. Uh, so just know that, it. I think it did an awesome job with that one prompt. Your easy offer in a box, and then your, which you get in our program uh, as part of the uh, lead flow starter kit or lead flow pro. And then, um, and then just asking it for this prompt. But then the, the magic is in what do you want to exclude? And in my world, I actually am looking to exclude SaaS and startup founders from this list. And here are previous titles that they've held that you can exclude. And now if they're going from chief technology officer to starting a business, right? You see how that's going? 
I can ex exclude all of these like development engineering types because they're very likely to have a much higher likelihood to start a business that's startup uh, that's a software startup. And if I wanted to like navigate circumnavigate around them, yeah, maybe they could start a consulting business. There's nothing in here that says that they can't. It's just a likelihood. And I mean, we already have a thousand people. And if I put these people back in here, I might have like 2000, but lower quality leads. So I'd rather have more leads that are high quality instead of like some that are like not so quality and have a higher volume. And, and you can move a lot of levers to add uh, volume. I'll show you which ones in a second. So next up, let's talk about years in current company. The reason I'm, I'm using current company and current position and years is because if they just went from this job, past job title, to this current job title, I don't want them to have done that five or 10 years ago, right? I want them to have done that in the last year because then they're a new founder, a new, uh, it, they just started this business. And next up, um, it's hard enough to sell in the US, for, you know, compared to like trying to figure this out in another country. So pretty straightforward uh, for time zone, tax reasons, forms of like compliance and like regulations that you'd need to navigate in different countries, just stick to your home. Uh, to start. There's plenty of people at home uh, for you to make money. And now let's go on this next column here. You have second degrees, group members, and third degrees. Now I'm going to remove group members for a second and see what it does here. Give that a second. All right. So in this case, it didn't really drive the needle that much. I'm going to put them back in, but we're going to go on a side quest and I'm going to show you how on LinkedIn, using your group memberships here on the left, right? I'm just going to go ahead and click groups. You could see that I've subscribed specifically to the kind of businesses that likely have the entrepreneur slash consultant slash I just started a business slash I'm a coach or a consultant for B2B. That's really the niche that I'm trying to, to lean into. So all you have to do is come in here and say like, let's say that you serve lawyers, right? So you'd be like lawyers in Canada. That's the first thing that came to mind. I'm going to type that in there. I don't know if this group exists. And then I'm going to go over to groups and then here we go. And then you have help graduates of law school outside of Canada, global lawyers of Canada, right? Like you could literally just find your ICP and look, it's 435. But if I made a lead list of just people in my groups, and then I joined this group and then I'm like filter down to the people in my group, I could target this group. You see what I'm saying? So it's addition by subtraction. Um, I strongly encourage you to be in all of the groups that um that give you the highest exposure to your icp and not groups like for your benefit because then you're going to have noise and you're not going to be able to use your groups when you're filtering here uh, so you can build an entire campaign just around the group membership i would do that separately but right now i'd like i have them in there it's not driving the needle a lot uh, and then i leave off first connections only because they're already in my network and because it'd be weird to like have connected with them and then go to someone that you've already connected. Hey, Tom, even though we're already connected, um, you know, hi, thanks for connecting, right? Like it just doesn't make sense. So the context is we're not connected. Now we're connected. And that's why I have omitted those people. No, no first degrees. I honestly have no idea what this shared experience is. Like, I'm sure you could find some write up online for it, but it's like so squishy where you hit this switch and you're like, I have no idea what the shared experience we have in between us. So clearly it's looking at things like I went to the same school or, um, you know, went to the same groups. So, I mean, obviously that's what it is, but like how it determines that is unclear. Cause if I go through here, you know, you already have those people in here cause you put them through your group memberships. So, um, since it just like completely eliminates it and we're not using it, I just find it's not useful. Uh, change jobs might be useful if you're like trying to target someone at the point that they're changing their job, like they just started their job. Uh, so that might be interested. Now, this one's kind of hotly debated, posted on LinkedIn, because it's a double-edged sword. Because if they post it, it means they're active and they're more likely to see your message. But also the kind of people who post are, I'm going to put them in a bucket of content creator. And content creators have bigger networks. And people with bigger networks have been around the block longer. And people who've been around the, the block longer also have their defenses up. And they've had a million of those conversations with people who are like, hey, I'm trying to like help you. I help blank to blank. And they're like, look, I'm good, honestly. So like... I find that you see a lot more, you know, thousand yard stairs here in terms of like getting hit up. Whereas if you remove this, two things happen. Look at the number of leads that we get. It doubled it in this case. It could do more than double, just so you know. It's not that it increased it so much that uh, it was filtered down to a thousand. Um, and 
these might be what we call lurkers and maybe you're already familiar with that term but a lurker is basically someone who creates a, a profile and like does absolutely nothing with it right and then the thing with lurkers is that they don't get hit up a lot they kind of just hang back and they just kind of consume they just read the pro the, the contents and they just stay out of it and you might be the first person to talk to them like let me see if i can find someone who has a kind of like lurker profile i'm just gonna click anybody at random see how they're doing See, 500 plus connections. I'm looking for people in the low hundreds uh, connections, right? So if you see someone who's got, like probably anybody who's in this world is going to have like a high rate of connections. But the point is, if you find a lurker, you're probably like the one conversation they've had in a year. So it, it like stands out to them. It's like, oh, someone's talking to me. Hello, you know? So like, just don't discount them just because they haven't posted, but... If you're like, I'd rather go fast, I'd rather get more contacts, and I've got like an abundance of leads, and I, I don't have time dealing with people who are maybe going to be unresponsive, you can whittle them down just knowing that it's like a two-edged sword. Uh, persona is their uh, LinkedIn's own, like, I'm going to just lump all of these like kind of director, decision maker, a buyer personas. Um, so I find that it's decent, you know, it does a decent job and this is better for when you're up market and you're looking at like at a business and you're like, I need to talk to director and up and it just kind of like lumps all of those different permutations of decision makers into one. Um, so that, that can be pretty handy. Maybe, maybe combined with the function could be pretty solid. So any decision makers in finance or decision makers in ops or whatever. And then you can have it also search lead lists and include or exclude. And this is actually incredibly powerful, right? So you could come in here. Um, I could build a, a list based off of, look look at this. This is going to be on steroids. So let's say, uh, let's find someone who's like an influencer real quick. So I'm going to pause for a second. Awesome. So I remembered, uh, Maley, here we go. So let's say I'm connected with her, okay? Like just hypothetically. And uh, I just realized I'm am I first or second. It says second connection. I must be um, following or something. So if you have Maylee Gavette and this person has 48,000 people and then she is, when you scroll down, um, board member and CEO and board member uh, or was, well, that's new, of Techstars. So now you have someone who has like a strong concentration, 48,000 people who are like in the startup world, right? that you can just kind of guess that they have a very high concentration of your ICP if uh, startups are your your ICP because of Techstars, if you know what Techstars does, right? They're uh, a startup accelerator. So given that, you could come in here and say, well, I've got Maley, um, and we can come back in here. And now you could say, you can build a whole list. Like, let's say that you cleared this all out, and then you had connections of Maley Gavette, right? Uh, but it has to be someone that I know, some just pick out Bryce, someone who I know. Uh, let's go with Bryce Warning. So let's say that I wanted to see people and now there's it just filtered them out. But let's say there's like a, a mutual connection between myself and Bryce. And he's got a very long list of people. Now I could like just target those people, right? And check out who he's connected to. And so you can include or exclude them, put them in their own lead list and more. And you can do some pretty cool things in here. Uh, you can also uh, do some integration to enable, uh, I think you need a different level of um, subscription to get to the CRM integration. And then this one's really interested because if you've messaged or viewed their profile, you can exclude them, which is where you can create a campaign to go back and catch everyone who's your ICP, whom for some reason you didn't talk to. How cool is that? I'm actually going to run a cleanup campaign like that in the next, uh, I don't know, a few days. So uh, I hope that this was insightful on how you can get the most. Oh, JK, we're going to go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole. So let's say that you did want to include one kind of person, but you wanted to exclude a different kind of person. I already kind of like told you a story of how we're taking out SaaS and startup people. And then here you go. No SaaS, no startup, no software. And um, if you want to know, like these are called uh, Boolean uh, searches, Boolean um, operators, I think is what this is called. Don't, you know, don't quote me on that. But the point is that you can use like and, or, and not, and like that kind of um, different uh, you know, operators and commands in here. So anyway, just go like this and be like, let's say we're saying um, marketing, we do want is okay, but then not everything in the parentheses, kind of like math, right? So I'm going to go in there and do that. And that 1000 people list, let's see how many people are left. 610 of them have the word marketing somewhere in their profile. So just so you see that, that doesn't mean that they are a marketer, 
But look, marketing and sales VP, first word. There it is. We got Wendy in there, right? So if you want them to talk about marketing, put that. If you want to do healthcare, you can pop healthcare in there. Now, note, that's not intended to be industry. I actually should have said that sooner. Uh, so let me show you where you can do industry. Uh, we did kind of skip uh, gloss passes. But over here, you can do industry, and then you can see the industries here. Yeah. Um, so they do a pretty good job at having a lot of different industries. If you're not sure, just kind of like start typing it in there. Uh, I would definitely lean on this one, but sometimes you have like sub industries like, um, SEO, right? Like maybe that's your ICP is SEO agencies. And that I don't believe is a, is an industry. Let me see. Right. So I wouldn't do that. So maybe SEO is the mark, the keyword that I use here. Amazing. So I hope that that was insightful and, um, and helped you understand how you can target more people. And I'll see you out there.